Let's talk football. What's the toughest game? What's the easiest game? And where do all 12 rank on the Bears schedule? This is Locked on Baylor. You are Locked on Baylor, your daily podcast on the Baylor Bears, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome into Locked on Baylor. I'm Mike Ruzioni alongside Cameron Stewart inside the Bears. Ah, uh, thank you for making Locked on Baylor your first listen every single day, Monday through Friday. Uh, Cam, the Baylor football team's playing 10 games this fall, 10 of those. So in today's show, we're going to break down one through they're playing 12 football games as well. Yes. Yeah. They, they I thought I knew where you were going with that. But Yeah, they very recently uh, changed. Well, they, they are playing 10. And then 10. two of them, they just get to kind of walk into the stadium and say, oh, hey, and they leave. Uh, so nine of, them. Yeah. of the 12, we're going to rank the 12 Real. games. The bottom two are pretty obvious. And then outside of that, or are they folks listening at home? Ha ha, cliffhanger. Um, Cam, first and foremost, how are you doing? I, I heard you were in quarantine. I know a lot of I'm folks doing are doing great. Really- Care I'm about doing great. <laughs> From you. what I've seen, the people really care. Yeah, um, I'm doing great. Thank you, Drake. Uh, two at-home tests, both negative. Finally decided, hey, this is the fourth straight day of me being sick. Maybe I try it again. Then it was positive. Oh. I thought we were going to do the listing everybody on the Miracle on Ice team in numerical order with the jersey on. I thought that's what we had discussed. That's not good, no. That is I- one of my party tricks, by the way. I meant Baylor's schedule uh, for the upcoming. Right. I think I can, season. I can, I can call an audible. I can call an audible. Cam, um, I think <laughs> yeah. remember the people that got really pissed off that I was wearing a mask on screen. I do remember that. Yeah. Who got COVID? Look what happened. Look what happened. Yep. Yeah. Everybody's frustrated. Everybody was upset that I had a mask on screen trying to be safe, and now you Cam stop doing going. it and exposed me. Yep. It's, I mean, they happened almost right next to each other. You know, mm. in the timeline. Cam. <laughs> Speaking of being exposed, Baylor I, is going to. I like that. First off, great segue. Uh, but I like that you finally had this realization last week. Like you've been talking up. We've all been talking up Baylor football for months now. And you're like, you know what? Actually, this could go bad. Yeah. 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 It could, I did. I it said could, that I was man. like, seven and five is not that crazy. Not that crazy. Um, but we're not even going to break down the wins and the losses for Baylor, just the toughest games this season. And Baylor is going to expose the Albany. I think they're like a dog of some great sort. Danes. Yeah. The great. The Albany great Danes to what power five football is all about. The Albany defense can Siaki Ika game. One is probably going to be one of the funnier things we see this season. I'd wish it was Louisiana tech. Cause this Albany game, I'm putting it at number 12. Wow. Great minds. Think alike. No chance you had Albany at 12. Albany at 12. I know. It, it's splitting hairs, 11 and 12. But you know what? I said uh, I didn't know they had a football program. I knew Texas State did. So I was like, you know what? Albany number 12. Albany Good 12. lacrosse, though. In case if, you're wondering. What? Good lacrosse. Albany has good lacrosse. Yeah. Okay. Not Texas State? Not that I know of. They could, for all I know. I have to look into that. Texas State hockey team actually is pretty solid. Field hockey specifically. Um, so I will Good take enough. I will <laughs> take uh that at 12. 11, okay. pretty easy. Stays easy. Uh, you know what, Drake? You're gonna laugh at me here. I did legitimately go back and forth with my eleven and ten. No. I'm sure our eleven no. and tens are still the same. Yeah. Uh but I was like, well, you know, Baylor struggled with Texas State last year. That was clearly a fluke. Mm-hmm. Uh, Texas State sucks hard. Um, and it's at home. Not that that should make any difference. But we'll actually get to see the game, which was yeah. a nice. I don't know. Were you at the game last year? I was not at the game. Was it a wedding in Arkansas, which had uh, no service? So I thought well, it was you my saw, service. You saw, right, yeah. We didn't no. see it. Yeah, we saw the exact uh, same thing. It wasn't anyway. my service. Yes, so I do have Texas State at 11. Yeah. Texas State at 11, pretty easy. That's where I went to. So the number 10 comes to town, and you think, Cam, you think, all right, Texas Tech has a first-year head coach. Lance Leopold's really building a something strong over at Kansas. Maybe, just maybe your number 10's not Kansas. But it is. It's Kansas? Yeah. Oh. And they're only that, they're only that high because it's a conference game. 
and it's at home. Uh, you know, you could, I would, I would, I would hear the tech argument if it was on the road or if, if Kansas was on the road and tech was at home. Yeah. 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 I don't think I would hear that argument even then. I still think Kansas, you're guilty until proven innocent yeah. uh, in the Big 12, especially. You beat Texas last season. I just don't think they say if we had like an alternate burnt orange home uniform. Yeah. I'd maybe feel then. tough. Yeah. That, like a bull. Like good. if you show a bull red, I don't I think they disproved that, by the way. I think if you show a bull red, he doesn't care. Are they, did, they, did they disprove that? that? Was that just cartoons? It's probably on Mythbusters or something. Yeah, I, I, I think it is a Mythbusters episode. You know, Jamie Heineman and... Oh, what's the other no, guy's name? I don't know. Oh, damn. I've watched like three episodes. They're not friends. They hate each other <laughs> in real life. They hate each other in real life. They only do a TV that. show because they... Yeah, because they get paid. That sounds like sports talk radio. Yeah, pretty sounds much. Sounds like us. Hosts just don't talk outside of the air unless it's I love back, it. yeah. the backyard on Thursdays. <laughs> just, yeah. Cam, yeah. here's where things get very much more interesting. Number nine on the list of toughest games for Baylor this next season. So your top three are Albany's the easiest. Albany's the easiest. Albany, Albany, potato, potato. Then you have Texas State. Then you have Kansas. Number nine, I have put... Oh, dude... Seven and five is not that far out of the realm of possibility <laughs> just because these all these nine games could end up being kind of stinky because you've got I'm gonna go Texas Tech, but also it's on the road. So yeah, Baylor could lose the game by one, and I would not be shocked out of my mind. Yeah, I have them at the same spot. Uh, I think it's gonna start to differentiate the further we go here. But uh yeah, I mean on the road, Tech's got great crowds usually. Yeah, uh, but you know they might have given up at that point. I think I think Tech's gonna stink, mm. like really suck. Uh, mm. If we're being totally honest, and so I, I don't have much more analysis than that. I don't know who the quarterback's gonna be. Probably gonna be Shucking Corn, uh, who wasn't all that good when he played last year. Anyway, I know it was tight. Uh, it was kind of a weird circumstance with the uh, Baylor Tech game last year, late in the season. Blake Shapin, crappy day. Uh, Weather-wise, so I don't think that's going to kind of fall into place for Tech again. But who knows? Maybe it does. Maybe they put out a great crowd. But I wouldn't bank on it, Drake. I think that's a favorite victory. I think we get number eight the same. I would be shocked, actually. I, I'm, I was surprised at myself for what I put for number eight. To be totally okay. honest with you, then maybe we don't have the same one because I'm not shocked by this. I I also believe that eight and nine could be interchangeable. I have an eight a home game against a team that got up on Baylor 30 to nothing the last time they came to McLean Stadium. Yeah, okay, we're the Give same. Give me yeah. TCU at home as the eighth hardest game on the schedule. Yeah, same. I was, because I've said it before, we always struggle against TCU. Like, there's no world where we should have lost to them last year. Uh, and it's at home, so that's why it goes down further in the pecking order. I just think they're also going to suck. Yeah. To be totally honest with you, I don't think they're going to be very good at all. Uh, they weren't they weren't good last year, um, but it, again that seemed like a fluke last year to not be able to stop Chandler Morris is just insane. Uh, I don't think Dave Aranda is going to be surprised by anything this year, um, and it's also late in the season, so I think at that point TCU might well have just packed it in at that point, and who knows? You know, let's just say best case scenario Baylor is you know one loss or maybe undefeated. Uh, and they're like a top 10 team, you're probably probably packing it in. Mm. I know it's a rivalry game and all that, but it's not Michigan-Ohio State. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. I was a little surprised to put it down that low. Uh, do you have your reasoning why? You, you haven't offered many. Yeah, I just don't think TCU is very good. I yeah, don't I think, they're, think they're good at the whole football thing next season especially. So – uh, yeah, you lose Gary. He was like your master recruiter. The only one, he was the one keeping you at seven and five when you were oh, seven yeah. and five. Yeah, for sure. Kept so, you at that level. When you think like, all right, somebody else going to come in here and they're going to win. At te- everybody wants to go to Texas Christian University. That's all. That's the popular thing. That's not really how it goes anymore. Even when it did, like it's lost, it's lost her. Mm-hmm. No one thinks TCU and then immediately thinks college football powerhouse. TCU is becoming ever more irrelevant outside of like baseball. Everything else is kind of a, no one really cares. Even when they're good, it's like, oh, TC is good this oh, year. Oh, their fan base just isn't oh, good. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So Baylor is, has a much, I feel like their brand's becoming a lot bigger than TCU. It's flipping almost because Baylor prior to 2012 was just, meh, no one really cared. No one cared. TCU, a lot of people care because it was this lovable team out in the Mountain West who was tearing up in the Big, tw- in the Big 12. Yeah. Weren't a threat to the other Texas teams, nothing like that. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
Uh, okay. I am going with number seven. Number seven on the list this year. A uh, home game, Kansas State. Number Ooh, seven, home game, okay. Kansas State for right. toughest game on Baylor's schedule. Doesn't crack the top 50% against Kansas State team that a lot of people have as their sneaker to win the Big 12. I like Kansas State this year. I I am one of those people who thinks they're smart and is, is picking Kansas State to be up pretty high. So I have at Iowa State. Mm. Now, I just – I think the, the bogey here could be that it's early in the season. I think it's the fir- – it's definitely the first road conference game. Is it the first conference game? I would say is is the first well unless you count BYU. Yeah, week four, right? Yeah, yeah. so uh, I'm not going to. Uh, um, but I, I think it's early enough in the season that Iowa State, young team, inexperienced, you know, in the star, their star players, you know what I mean, the, the skill positions, that they're probably going to be like, oh, you know what, we don't know any better. We're supposed to be good. We've been good the last couple of years. Let's go out and beat Baylor. Uh, that's the only thing I think that trips them up. Uh, but to be honest, they were a pretty disappointing team last year. Baylor should have won by more. And I, uh, I, I just don't think they're going to be that much of a threat. So I don't. I wish I had more to give you there. I don't. There's not Brock Purdy and Brees Hall and Charlie Kohler coming after you. With I'm, sc- I'm scared. A of thousand Kansas games State. combined experience. Yeah. Scared of Kansas State, but also Iowa State. I'm scared is enough on the road, and so I'm going at number six. The top six toughest games on Baylor football schedule next season are coming up next. But first, let me tell you about Bet Online. Bet Online. Oh, dude, what I tell you, I'm, I'm kidding you. I'm not even kidding you, actually. I'm not kidding you. One of my favorite things to do in the fall is to enjoy my monetary um, goods being wagered on athletics, typically in the football category. And so when I do that, I always use bet online i now have specifically i look i used to use other sites prior to working at locked on now that i use bet online very very happy number one source for all your odds lines and games major league baseball is going on right now the nfl the nfl is about to be back i don't even like the nfl it's freaking football and i'm ready for football uh college basketball obviously uh is not coming back yet or for a while i don't know why i said that bet online though continues to be a top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in-game betting scores and podcasts they have you covered head to bet online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today at bet online where the game starts all right top six my number six i am you know what no 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 no. you go first you're number six okay this i couldn't put any higher just because of the skill of the team but it's all the voodoo at west virginia mm. i don't love it at all uh i just think back to like all, all the worst games have been at West Virginia. Obviously, the one regular season loss in 2014 that keeps them out of the playoff. But more recently, 2020, that just horrific overtime game where Baylor just could not move the dang football. It was yeah. so awful to watch. Um, and then both teams were bad, very bad. Then that one that I thought Charlie was going to get brain dead, that was 2017, mm-hmm. the one win season Thursday night, and they just pounded them at West Virginia. Oh my God. Never won there as we brought up on this podcast. And again, I I think, you know, maybe there's this world that third time's the charm for JT Daniels and he puts together a good season. I wrote for inside the bears that this is probably the level he's supposed to be at. Probably not USC, not Georgia. Yeah. West Virginia. So maybe that all goes right. And they've got a decent team, but outside of that, they are not a good team. I'm just so worried about that voodoo at West Virginia. They should be like eighth or ninth on this list. They're not. They're I'm going to pull out your stop for my six and go Iowa State of the road. I don't think it's the toughest game in the world, but again, I think Kansas State at home. I am overvaluing Baylor being at home, probably because Baylor has been historically so bad on the road, just just not really good when they go other places at closing out games, especially. Mm-hmm. Remember that two and seven season, They're, the game at Tech, should have won that game. Ugh. The game at Iowa State should have won that the game at West Virginia. They were dangerously close to putting together a four-win year. Uh, so dangerously close. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go with the road games. I'm so I'm gonna put Iowa State at my six spot. Moving into the five top five hardest games for Baylor on the football schedule. My number five is West Virginia in Morgantown, mostly because I don't know if you knew this. Baylor's never won in Morgantown. What? Yeah, you're yeah. having a laugh. Nope. Nope. Never done it. They won't do it. They refuse to win in Morgantown, and they might refuse to do it again this season. So my five is West Virginia. Slap her on there. Where do you go 
with numero cinco. Kansas State at home. Mm-hmm. I, I think they are a good sleeper team. We've never stopped Deuce Vaughn, really. Yeah. Um, and it, it would probably be higher if it was on the road. Uh, it's also in that tough stretch of games where Kansas State could still be having a good season and have like three losses at that point. Um, two or three losses at that point, you might overlook them looking towards uh, Oklahoma, TCU, UT. Uh, and so that's kind of like the bogey aspect once again. But I think Baylor all in all is a better team. They sh- should stop the run better than they have against them in the past. We saw they were very good at that last year, just overall. Um, but just worry about Kansas State team who's probably good at that point, but doesn't have a whole lot to play for either. So it's kind of house money going on the road. Cam, here's where I get Interesting with my you're top very you're always interesting, Drake. Uh, thank you, Michael Ruzioni. Yeah. When I get in my top four, we both have the same top four, by the way. We have the same top four. We have BYU yeah. on the road, Texas yeah. on the road, Oklahoma on the road, Oklahoma State at home. Mm-hmm. I get interesting in that Baylor could go seven and five, or they could go 12 and 0. Here's why I think they could, could go 12 and 0 because my number seven game against Kansas State at home could end up being a much tougher game than my number one game because granted, yes, the the big 12 slate is going to be a gauntlet because there are so many teams that are right there, the parody of the league, but you're not going to see like most years where there are two teams, three teams that are just dominating everybody where that's, you know, last year, Baylor, Oklahoma state was kind of that way. Texas, Oklahoma has been historically, I think your, your one and your seven are much more even than they are most years. So that's why I'm not as scared of my top four, mostly because the question marks from these teams. So my number four game here, Oklahoma state at home, Spencer Sanders, you're bad at football. I said it specifically against Baylor. Maybe you're good against other good teams point. where I that's don't watch you, but Spencer, you are not very good when you play against Baylor and you just you threw seven interceptions in two games against the Bears last year. I saw with my own two eyes four of them in the Big 12 championship game. That was fun. Yeah. That was a neutral site. Good luck coming to Waco. You're good for like six picks there, my man. Yeah. I agree with you, but I'll talk about that later because they're not my number four. Oh! My number four is at Daryl K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium against the Texas Longhorns. Now, hear me out. There is, I, I love, I love pooping on UT just as much as everyone else does. Trust me, it's one of my favorite pastimes. I love it. You did that right but, before the show. Yeah, I did. I did. Uh, but there is an alternate universe. Like, I could foresee them being a good team. Because Quinn Ewers is a good quarterback. I can see that. That's not out of the realm of possibility for me at all. I, I, I'm not, I can't bank on it. I've just seen this too often. I've seen this story too often for me to be like, hell yeah, that's a top 10 team. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Uh, I would also say more likely is that they're a good team, not a great team. Uh, this is big for them right after Thanksgiving. UT loves to show out for that game. But then again, like I said, with the Kansas State argument could be they could also not really have not really have anything to play for. You know, if, if they've lost two games by that point or three, they're not going to be in the Big 12 championship game, which is what they really care about. They're already making a ball. Um, so there could be that when they're not to play for don't have anything to play for. But I just think from what we've seen in terms of a continuity of the football program, Baylor is a better team than Texas right now. And so, but, but I think it could be tough going on the road at UT, who is another team you don't normally play well against usually because they're pretty good and just historical uh, argument, but could have a good Quinn Ewers going against you. And it's a big game for them right after Thanksgiving. They love that game. It is time. For the top three toughest games on the Baylor football schedule. Top three. Cam Stewart of Inside the Bears, what is your number three? Uh, home to Oklahoma State. This is almost number one just because it's the most important game that we looked at in July. So uh, obviously August now. But Tom Brady's birthday, by the way. Happy birthday, Tom. Um, <clears throat> but I, I, I'm going with <laughs> the Drake Toll argument. I have not seen Spencer Sanders be good at football. People tell me he is. I've never seen it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he sucks against Baylor. Yeah. He had a good game against them when they were terrible. It was their last game of the season, and they had the, the, the cruise ships warmed up. He sucks. He sucks. And I think 
when you don't have the the great two headed running attack, or at least that we know of, um, like they had last year, you become even more one dimensional. And we saw them when they were one dimensional the other way, where Baylor was like, "I dare you to pass against us with this kid. I freaking dare you." Now he's going to have to do that. When you take away the the element of surprise from Spencer Sanders, he's even worse than he already is. And it's at home. Uh, I I just think it's uh it, it it fits nicely for Baylor. It does. But they played two tough games last year. They've got some good defensive pieces coming back. They do. Baylor could the best player, but October 1st, yeah. I mean, you, you know, it's right there. Baylor Yeah, cuz I mean, Baylor's got to work out some things <laughs> with some new guys in skilled positions as well, which I will get to later in my list. Uh, but that early season could be tricky. Could be. Baylor could reasonably be two and two. They got BYU and they got Iowa State. They could be two and two. They could be four and oh. They could be four and oh going to the Oklahoma State game. And I think either, either way, it's a good game to, to win. Okay. Uh, my number three is Texas at Daryl K. Royal. What's that one song about Texas? That one? Yeah. Yeah. People don't like that song. People that do one. not like that song. So I'm going to go Texas. Uh, I think Baylor does win the game. I, I, I'm i very confident that Baylor wins that game against UT on the road, which was a close game of the two and seven season again, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Baylor had their chances to win that game. All, so, all kinds of chances. I think Baylor does win that game. I, this is I, this I have confidence in, but it doesn't mean it's not top three toughest because you're on the road against a really a, t- a Texas team that's exponentially better than you athletically. Maybe not coaching staff wise. Also, the Oklahoma State point, they lost their DC, and no one's ever said, Oh, Mike Gundy, defensive yeah. genius. So true. They kind of run through those. Um, I, one more point on the UT thing. I oh, think yeah, it's actually yeah. better for Baylor that it's later in the season. Yeah. Uh, because we talk about these things of like, oh, it's early in the season. You know, they might not know any better. You don't know what they're gonna do. You're gonna have all kinds. Dave Aranda is gonna have all kinds of film on Quinn Ewers yeah. by that point, late November. That's right. Well, I think they will have binged Quinn Ewers by then, by the way. Hopefully. Yeah. Who's their backup? Do you know? I don't think it matters. <laughs> I don't know. Everyone left. I'm pulling Oklahoma like last <laughs> season. <laughs> so I think that favors Baylor, actually. Yeah. yeah. Well, what favors Baylor, too? Think about the 2019 LSU Texas in the regular season. That was a close right. game, the closest yeah. game on LSU schedule because Texas packed the freaking house early in the season, had all that hype and bah. And they didn't know any better. Right. Didn't know any better. So for Baylor to get him the end of the season, I like that. Instead of Baylor coming in, you know, number eight in the country, week four. Oh, we and that's another we have seen Texas just take nose dives year after year after year yeah. late in the season. Why is it gonna be different? Um, Cam, our last two are the exact same. I think they're gonna be in the same order too. <laughs> they're gonna be they're gonna be in the same order. My number two hardest game on Baylor's football schedule next year, game two at BYU in Provo. For a 9 p.m. Central time, I think, 10, 15 on the East Coast, where I am right now, Mm -hmm. it is a freaking late game. That place is going to be sold out to the brim, like not even a place to sit, not a place to stand, nothing. Baylor's going to the the gnashing teeth with Blake Shapin at quarterback for his first true road experience. I'm worried. I got something to tell you, Drake. No we way. Are, we are not the same. No way. We are not the same. You're going with Oklahoma at two? At Oklahoma. At Oklahoma, which has been a horror ground for the Baylor Bears and for most, to be honest with you. Not a great place to go and win a football game. No. Uh, but this is one of my bold things of this year. I do not think OU is going to be that good. Mm. They're going to be a bold team. Of course, they'll probably win eight games. But I'm seeing them in the top 15, top 20 in these preseason. I just don't think they're that good. There's a lot of change around there. A lot of new players, obviously, whole new coaching staff. That why I have them is so tough is because they've probably figured it out at that point. Um, yeah. and maybe they're a little under underlooked by Baylor. I mean, they should November never 5th. Be, November but, 5th. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe it comes together at that point and it's uh, it's just a tough place to play. It was one there once ever. Um, so, but when think, they did I think win, both there. teams are in their stride actually. But I think Baylor's probably actually a better team to be totally honest with you uh, on paper. Um, but I'm just worried. I'm just worried that at that point o- OU's lost a couple of games. They need a signature victory. They put together a perfect game plan and win it. Mm, so, like an undefeated Baylor. 
an undefeated mm-hmm. Baylor and a and, two. And that's a gauntlet of that that stretch of schedule we were talking about. UT at UT, Kansas State, TCU at home at OU. Not in that order, but in a four week span, and uh, that's that's tough. So you, I think that's the beginning of it is at OU. Um, so yeah, it's just not easy. Maybe Baylor's not even proven at that point. Mm. Who knows? But my toughest game of the schedule will have already happened. So. Yeah, my toughest game of the schedule is my number one, Oklahoma in Norman. So I'm going with BYU at two, Texas three, BYU two, and Oklahoma on the road at number one. I just, it's Norman. You mentioned Baylor's only won there once. Uh, and when they did, it was a big, it was a blowout. But you got Brent, 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 Brent that is their new head coach. Correct. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, very defensive minded. So you got Dave Aranda versus, you know, a lesser Dave Aranda because Dave Aranda beat Brent Venables in the national championship game. People don't talk about it enough. People do not talk about that enough. So I am going to go with that as my number one still, because defensive-minded coach in Norman, game could be stupid slugfest where Blake Shapin's kind of just, you know, middle of the season worn out, and it's final score 14 to 10, big 10. Like that Nebraska game that Oklahoma played last year was just boring and terrible. Oh, God. We could see one of those stinkers out in Norman. Just, you know, drizzling rain, 50 degrees. I'm not going to go. Uh, so put me at Oklahoma at one because it's probably the rowdiest play. It'll be a night game, I assume, or a noon game, which would be stupid. But the crowd will be great. Big noon, I believe. Big crowd, noon. Crowd will be great. And the team and fan base will want revenge after last season, even without Lincoln Riley, which felt like a big – it feels like now people are really glad that Oklahoma lost that game. Oklahoma fans are glad they lost that game to Baylor because Lincoln Riley was so pissed and they're happy when he's pissed. So, still going to go with Oklahoma number one. And your number one will be, I, I could guess. I bet I could guess. Yeah, because we've already said it, basically. At, in Provo, Utah, at Brigham Young University, for most of the same reasons. Uh, Blake Shapin, who I have a ton of confidence in, but second game, first real road game, like you said. I uh, did play at Kansas State last year, most of the game. Um, but I, it's it's, again, kind of those early season cliches of like, BYU, we don't really know what they have yet. We don't have a ton of film on them. Um, you know, they might not know that they're not supposed to beat us. Uh, yeah. The other thing is, from the Baylor side, skill position on offense specifically, running back, wide receiver. Those are humongous question marks. Humongous. I know there are people who've been on this podcast who, like, knew them personally in high school, so knows they'll be great. But, uh, not naming any names because I don't remember. Uh, but, I just think those are huge, huge, huge question marks for you. And that's why I like them better off later in the season, because I think Aranda is a good coach and there's a good culture there. So they probably will have figured it out. But second game of the season against a team you don't know too well yet. I know you played them last year, but it's a different team. Both of you guys are different teams. A lot of changes at the skill positions. I'm worried. I'm worried about some Mormon magic, Drake. That's all. Baylor oh, yes. should still win. Baylor should still win. It's maybe not the toughest team they play, right? But I think it's the toughest game they play. I like it. I don't mind that being number one because I, I actually, I think I'm gonna go to Provo. What a cool atmosphere! I would be. love to go to Provo. You wanna go? Let's wanna go, go together, go? dude. Well, yeah, it's like tickets dude. are 200 flights are 250 for out of Dallas. Is it not really? Bad. Not bad. Not bad dude, at all. Dude, that's that's great. For, if you salt, see travel for prices right now, these days, yeah, 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 yeah. To Salt Lake, and then Salt Lake's like a 40 minute drive. I, I got fan, I got fans out there. Not fans of me, but BYU fans that I'm friends with. Sure. I did get that inside the Bears check today. So yeah, that's yeah. what was coming. I told you, told you it was coming. Yep. So I'm gonna go. My <laughs> that list covers uh, most of it. Uh, most of it. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. <laughs> anyway, Drake and I are going. Easiest you game know what? of the season. You know what? You know what? You know what? Let's drive. Stop. It's 20. It's like 22 hours. I'm not going to do that in the mountains. It's like driving to the Cape, basically. It is. It literally is. Um, just less beaches, salt lakes, though. Yeah. You got My some of those. Easiest sure. game, Albany. Second easiest, Texas State. Third easiest, Kansas. Then I'm going Texas Tech, TCU, Kansas State. Those are my bottom six. Toughest games of the season, Iowa State. Followed up by West Virginia, then Oklahoma State. Topped off, toughest three, Texas on the road, Oklahoma, no, BYU on the road, Oklahoma on the road, Cam. Uh, I'm going to go Albany 12, Texas State 11. We got the same first four, right? Yep. So seven, home to TCU, always tough. At Iowa State at, oh no, that's number seven, sorry. Number six, at West Virginia, never won in Motown. 
five, Kansas State at home, four at Texas University, uh, three home to Oklahoma State, two in Norman against the Sooners, and number one in God's country at Brigham Young. <sighs> the All-American Prophet, Joseph Smith. Yep. Guy of Rochester, New York. get much more American than that. Yep. Biblical times, 1823. Found yep. some stone tablets in the rest but of the But Baylor has some success, by the way. They beat BYU. Steve Young. Was that the national championship team or the year after? I think it was the year it's after, the year Steve after. Young. Steve yeah. Young, yeah. Or the year before, 83. They beat him in 83. They won in 84, I think. Maybe not. National Maybe. championship program, Baylor beat him. Okay. I don't know. Drake told Cameron Stewart, come back tomorrow. We'll be talking about more sports and stuff like that. Happy... Uh, is it Thursday or Wednesday today? Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Birthday Glad to Tom Brady, you. August 3rd. Uh, we will be back with you tomorrow. Not we. I don't think Cam will be here. That's okay. Uh, again, inside the Bears, you can follow him at Cam at Real Cam Stewart. Hell yeah. And thank you for watching. Locked on Baylor. <laughs>